Western militaries, by Western, I mean not just Europe, but also the United States, Australia, Japan, they really rely upon high technology and high information. Um, and so having good intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, uh, all of that is run based on semiconductors. Uh, we need the programs to be able to process the information and we need the processors that are able to like churn through all that data very, very quickly. And that's really where you need advanced semiconductors and that's where uh, I want to sort of node or, or critical nature within that supply chain is really important. The likelihood that the UK will be brought into a conflict, I think if a conflict were to occur, would be quite high. Um, you know, it's uh, the, the countries that we immediately brought in would be say Japan, uh, but especially with uh, ALCUS, um, the Australia, UK, US uh, collaboration on creating nuclear submarines. You know, if, if I'm China, and I'm thinking, okay, I, I want to take over Taiwan, then I also have to prevent the US or any other supporter from coming in. That means I probably have to take out US forces based in Japan, which might bring in the Japanese, probably bring in the Japanese. Uh, I have to prevent <clears throat> Uh, regional support for the United States, which means Australia, maybe the Philippines as well, uh, and that could very easily bring in the UK too. Um, and so, as a result, I tend to think that were war to happen, it would be a pretty big one. You know, we're not talking a single instance which stays contained, like kind of like Ukraine now. Uh, it would be just let's bring in everybody all at once. China were to take Taiwan, then. Countries that are of lower rank than Taiwan would be extremely concerned about U.S. defense commitments. Um, the Philippines, for example, should be very, very concerned. If the U.S. isn't willing to defend Taiwan, it probably doesn't have the ability to defend you. Other countries like in Central and Eastern Europe, um, when Trump canceled the military exercises with South Korea in 2018, a whole variety of Central and Eastern European countries called up their counterparts uh, within the United States to ask, what does this mean for me? What does this mean for us? Um, and it's driven by the same sense of rank. Uh, you know, there's no reason for Estonia, for example, to really be all that concerned about South Korea, except insofar as it implies, well, if the US isn't willing to partner up with South Korea, much more economically vibrant, bigger than us, then we have to be concerned as well. And then lastly, as I mentioned, if uh, China were to take over um, uh, Taiwan, then the defense and supply and support of Japan and South Korea is just that much harder. Uh, most of their major trade and logistics lines run through the Taiwan Strait or around the Taiwan Strait. Uh, if, you, if China controls it, they can just choke off that supply. And especially for Japan, an island nation, um, facing some of those similar uh, sort of supply constraint problems as Taiwan, that's really concerning for them too.